Uh, next up, uh, you know, we, we have a panel with us uh, on uh, retail tech to uh, turbulent times, uh, the you know challenges and success stories uh, of this new normal. Uh, to speak on the session, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Rahul Sharma, who's uh, CIO uh, Reckit South Asia, uh, Srimoy Ghosh, uh, Head of IT Business Applications, Marico, and uh, the panel moderator, Karan Chaudhary, uh, who's co-founder at Bausk Insight. Uh, can we have, have them on the stage, please? Yeah, Karan, over to you. Thank you so much, Shivam. I mean, this has been, um, uh, it, it, it was a really uh, amazing session. I was hearing the last of it and it had so much of good insight. Uh, thank you so much for making me a moderator in this session. I think uh, this, this was definitely one of the topics which was very close to my heart. Uh, the last two years has been a very, very strong challenge for every single business, uh, whether it has been a startup or whether it has been uh, the old age businesses. Uh, COVID came, uh, the pandemic was pretty brutal. I don't think any one of us really was there to, uh, to understand what was the gravity of it. And when everything just stopped all of a sudden, uh, I think, I think uh, uh, there was a lot of thought process innovations and reinv reinvention of the wheel which had to be done. Uh, it definitely had to bring the A, a game of everyone out. Uh, pretty much uh, lots of businesses uh, were wondering whether they would even exist after COVID, whether you are even the most uh, funded business or whether you're the most profitable business pre-COVID. A uh, lot of us didn't even know what was, the, what was going to happen post-COVID. Uh, I remember those days of April, uh, when, when March and April, when when the news came out of the complete lockdown, uh, there was there were so many challenges at Bowskin Science. Uh, we had we had since we were a digital first company, uh, predominantly at that moment, I think we had approximately ninety percent of our business from the online sector. Uh, we had so many shipments which are already in transit, uh, where it was not delivered to the customers, and uh, I think that was one of our biggest challenges which we faced during the pandemic. Uh, lucky for us, things became a lot better because the demand which came after things opened up made, a, made it a lot easier. But uh, those were days where I remember um, we being an early stage startup, uh, we being non-funded at that time, we also in a very, very strong growth momentum. Uh, I think that was one of our biggest challenges and uh, that's the reason why uh, this topic is very, very close to me and thank you so much for making me a moderator here. But at the same time, I'm so happy to, to get an insight from two of the biggies, uh, whether, when, whether it's uh, Srimoy from Mariko or Rahul from Reckitt, how, how did they go through uh, with, with such a challenge? I'm sure that they would have had a pretty, uh, pretty tough time also, because I don't think anyone got spared, uh, whether it was for the good of it or whether it was for the bad of it. Uh, so I would love to hear from Srimoy first. Uh, how did they deal with it? What was the biggest challenges during this lockdown? Uh, uh, we would love to get to know what, uh, what, what did Mariko do? I think the biggest challenge, which you rightly said, was product placement. So how do we get our products to reach where consumers want? And how do we get those orders from our customers, whether it is a retailer or a wholesaler. So that was the biggest challenge. And not only that, the entire supply chain which came with it, right? So how do you ensure your factories stay open? How do you facilitate your people to come to work at the factories? How do you produce and get the logistics in place? So I think that that was the biggest challenge, product placement. It. And uh, Rahul, how about you? Uh, I, I think I think at your end, uh, I think the challenge was with Dettol, and and I think every single one of us just wanted Dettol. I think uh, Dettol has been one of the most iconic brands, and I think pretty much everyone would have been. How do you get your hands on Dettol? So I think I would love to hear about this. Yeah, so means uh, Racket has a very strong play in the health and hygiene sector. Dettol being a number one brand. And the demand really outstripped the supply by I don't know how many X. Yeah? And it, it came from nowhere. Nobody expected that. So the biggest challenge for us was to meet the demand and uh, provide visibility to the trade. 
to our distributors, to our retailers, that uh, when will they get it all supply and which distributor will have the stock or will store, which store will have the stock. Yeah. So that was number one, that how do we, how do we really fuel the demand? And second was the supplying goods during the lockdown, even if we have the stock, yeah, how do we, how do we get the, get the goods out from our factory to the CNFA because there was lockdown. Uh, we needed all kinds of permissions from the government authorities. Then within the CFA, how to make them operational, yeah? uh, and likewise transportation, yeah. And and then uh, then the sales force, yeah. How do we how do we allow them to go and work in the market? So those are the biggest challenges: uh, supplying goods during due to lockdown, and then how do we meet the demand, and how do we provide the visibility of where the stock is in the entire value chain, current. Uh, Rahul, uh, what about what about uh, the technology point of view? Was there any part of an overhaul which you guys needed to do because of technology uh, not being adequate uh, pre-COVID? Because I know for a fact that majority mm-hmm. of the companies did not anticipate this into any sort of uh, a roadmap. No one had anticipated such a thing. But what did what did y'all do with regards to technology? Did y'all have to adopt to technology uh, first with Rahul and then with Srimoy? Yeah. So, so Karan, uh, 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 within record, uh, we had to come up with, with very quick solution because that was a time when it all demand was very high. And what we did was uh, we did some bulk SMS. We used bulk bulk SMS carrier to send SMSs to our retail outlets. And that bulk SMS had a DB, had, had a distributor portal link wherein the outlet can easily sign in and then they can find out which distributor near to his location has the stock of which SKU update all. And we will, we will update, we'll keep this distributor portal link updated every day. Every TSI ASM had to give stock supply situation and distributor end. That was extremely helpful because uh, uh, you know, right from a common man to anyone in the government authority or politicians, we had so much demand coming from Detol and it really helped us give visibility. We could point them to this distributor portal link. Yes, this is the factual situation. Yeah, this, this city, this distributor has stock so much and this is what you can buy from where. So that was one. Uh, and then in this portal, we also mentioned that which distributor has the capability to go and deliver and where you need to arrange a pickup, yeah? because that again was a challenge. So that really worked very well for us, gave us the visibility to the trade. And second was uh, uh, we did uh, a lot of automation of the, of the admission letters. So because of lockdown, uh, how did we enable our, our trade partners? Uh, uh, because permission letters were needed for, op- for operation of the essential products. Yeah? And then we issued them to 5,000 plus trade partners, to distributors, to CNFAs, to our transporters, to our sales force, ASM, TSI, to the loaders, uh, to operate, to the CFA operators, etc. These were two very quick solutions. They did not need uh, very high tech uh, lead time, etc. But they really work very well for us. Srimoy? I think last one year has been the best time to be in IT, if you ask me. I mean, as I corporate IT teams, we have never been in so much focus and in demand for our skills since last year, right? So I think uh, we tried a lot of new go-to-market models. Yeah. So we tried delivering our products through our Sephora uh, products through Swiggy and Zomato. We tried to set up um, uh, a web portal through which retailers could place orders of the top 30 SKUs. We tried to do telecalling. So instead of sending uh, the distributor field force actually in the market when it was not safe, we tried the model of, you know, telecalling. So call distributor, uh, call the retailers and get the orders. We uh, developed our own um, uh, D2C uh, website wherein, you know, we put in a flagship store of our Sephora and then, you know, we put in other uh, uh, D2C uh, websites for our other brands. So I think a lot of experimentation we did. And as the effects of COVID, uh, as lockdown tried to ease up, you know, 
only one or two of those models eventually uh, were seen as having potential to scale, right? So maybe only one or two from there, you know, we have scaled. Shrimai, uh, on that topic itself, uh, out of all these initiatives which were taken, uh, which one was that initiative which really worked very well for you and uh, which y'all are, which you think that has gone as per plan and which one probably which has not gone as per plan so far? Would you have any examples you would like to share with everyone? Yeah, sure. So for us, I think our uh, D2C website, uh, putting that together, uh, is is a great success story that we have. So initially we started quick and dirty saying that let's put a website together. And, you know, when we actually wanted to scale beyond say three or five orders per day, we figured quick and dirty doesn't work. So we actually put the whole tech behind it and, you know, and when you try to do a D2C, you realize that it's not just the website. You need to have an ERP at the back end of it. You need to have integration with your delivery partners. You need to have, you know, functionalities like subscription. You need to have loyalty points. And, you know, you need to integrate with multiple payment methods like wallets, like, uh, you know, uh, bill desk, what have you. So putting that together, I think, was very exciting for me. Uh, I, I, as a tech person and putting that whole tech stack saying that in each capability, what are the options and what do we put in? And that is something that I'm supremely proud of and it's a big success story. Uh, there are a lot of other tactical things that we tried which were for that moment and you know eventually died their uh, natural death like for example we tried to put that website where we uh, where we said our retailers can order our top 30 SKUs uh, for the first three uh, or five months but eventually when DSR started visiting the store again retailers said you know <laughs> let's forget about it I have a I have one more question of uh, of the fly for both. Uh, was it was it tough? I'm guessing all these initiatives would have started after COVID yes. or after the pandemic came. Uh, okay. Was it tough for you all to actually uh, find talent or get people started? Because I'm sure these were initiatives which are not planned. Or was or was any of these initiatives planned? Uh, or was the internal teams of both your respective companies were they able to handle it and build on to the uh, to the current uh, uh, challenge? Uh, Rahul, I'll start with you. So, uh, Makan, I think as Shimui said, this was a very fertile ground to experiment. Yeah. So the management was the leadership was much more receptive to any any new experiment which is tech led which can help uh, in this COVID situation. So that, that factor outweighed everything else. Yeah? Even if some vendor has some team which is outplaced, you know, uh, we could go to, we can ramp up in some other ways, you know. And so many myths were broken, you know, in terms of virtual ways of working. Uh, in my previous organization in month and closing, unless you spend two nights in the office with 20 people, you won't have a month and closing, yeah. Or, you know, uh, likewise, if you're doing a new campaign, unless marketing folks meet the agencies 20 times, it won't happen. But but so many myths were broken with the virtual ways of working being so productive. Yeah. So right. this was a really good time to experiment and very similar experiment what Shimoi said, you know, no touch, uh, uh, no touch ordering, you know, digitizing every part of value chain, be it uh, shipping, be it payments. A lot of experiments were done in this time. Shrivai? Um, I think from a talent point of view, uh, last year was not difficult at all, but this year is supremely yeah. difficult yeah. to get talent. I'm having such a huge challenge filling open or new positions. So the good thing right now about being in IT is you are able to create new positions as well. Yeah. Uh, so for the new positions that I'm creating or places where I'm losing talent, very difficult. I completely agree. I completely yeah. agree. I think I think last time a lot of people were panicking and and sacking a lot of people, but uh, this time, but uh, the second wave, I don't think that was the case. I think they've gone gone way more in demand. Uh, I just want to give you a small uh, thing about about how we handled this part luckily we did we did yeah. not have to be since we were digital first we probably did not have that bigger 
challenge, especially with technology and so on. Uh, but probably there was one very, very critical technology which which needed to be improved on was uh, there was there was critical supply issues when the demand had come back and it was and transportation was not happening between various states and uh, for us to actually start allocating orders or start splitting orders for customers when they actually place an order on the d2c website or to get the correct uh, stocks in that particular location i think turned out to be a uh, be a very very big challenge for us and uh, and over there we had to improvise uh, pretty quick to make sure we we get much better algorithms uh, of how do you split orders, how do you get it to the customer faster, which warehouse we can do it, which warehouse we needed to block because of whatever restrictions. I think I think that was at, at the e-commerce part. I think that was one thing where we we as a brand had to had to really work on, and uh, that was uh, a little bit of uh, of our uh, ex- experience which we had. Uh, that's that's amazing. Uh, I, I what what do you think is uh, is going to be the future. What do you think has, have we learned out of this uh, pandemic? What technologies have changed? And and um, I just want to start off with where I'm coming from. And I had even mentioned it before was, was I loved it how, how a lot of companies innovated and started taking WhatsApp orders and how you actually start placing orders on WhatsApp where you do not have your delivery person having to actually, uh, or not delivery person, but your but your sales representatives on ground do not have to actually go to your distributors or do not have to go to retailers to take order. And a lot of retailers were very, very comfortable with placing uh, WhatsApp orders. Uh, some examples which I was seeing is uh, they had done AI-based uh, uh, learnings where they were even able to understand the lingo of what is a Hindi lingo, how the retailers actually speak. Uh, for example, Rinka Char Char Packet Dedo, and then it was easily able to add four packets of Rin, uh, or lots of those specific things which was actually mapped. And I, I I found that innovation very interesting and something which could actually scale for the future. Uh, would you have any thoughts and processes or thoughts about your vision about how retail tech is going to actually improve in the future? Uh, it could be technology which is there right now which is not adopted and has a great chance of it being adopted in the future. Shima? Um, so for me, I think, uh, I, I'm guessing it would be similar for most FMCGs, is that a huge part of our business is serviced by our distributor channel. And it continues to be the most efficient way of delivering products on the shelf. Right. So I think a lot of us will be focusing on tech that makes this distribution channel more efficient, right? And at the same time, we'll also be looking at developing new go-to-market models, like say, telecalling or order through an app or, you know, um, understand how we acquire new customers to our DTC platform. So focus will continue to be on distributor channel, but you know, not wanting to miss out the rest of the channels which are growing, which are developing. That's what I would think will be the theme. Sorry, Rahul. Yeah, so uh, Karan, the kind of shift which we saw at Reckitt, uh, one is that the modern trade, uh, uh, there was a lot of impact on modern trade because many of the those hypermarkets were in the were in the malls, you know. And so many malls were closed. Yeah, so there was a drop in the share in modern trade, and that demand shifted to online, to e-commerce. Yeah, so our growth of e-commerce went from our share of e-commerce in sales went from two percent to ten percent in less than three years, and we see it going close to twenty-five percent in next three to four years. So a lot of our effort and uh, and investment is going on e-commerce side. Uh, how do we enable our e-commerce team better in terms of uh, providing them visibility on the availability of our record stock? What is the um, share in, in terms of uh, uh, review ratings, availability, uh, customer feedback, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of work happening there. And even, even outside FMCG, if you look at them, look at the cell phone mobile sector, uh, it used to be 40% online, 60% and offline now it's 55 online 45 offline yeah so a lot of demand shift 
from traditional channel modern trade uh, uh, db to e-commerce and then the eb2b eb2b is emerging as a big viable model yeah uh, they have direct contracts with cpg companies and they are at a much more favorable margin uh, compared to wholesale and they are expanding those those partnerships yeah um, uh, means during the covid time there was so much service disruption labor shortage uh, it, a conventional distributor uh, could not fill demand there was no way he can provide visibility to the to the service he will provide and with the entire tech enablement people are very comfortable placing order on the mobile and someone like odan uh, if you if you are working with them then they provide full visibility yeah, and they can meet your top up orders emergency orders so that that is a channel with, and they have, they have a viable business model unlike you know a uh, you know, lot of other e-commerce which are still burning cash 15 years after having started so these are the two big trends which i see growth of e-commerce and growth of eb2b so stay on this question for a minute and we we'll make this quick but uh, if there was one one of these levers uh, which i would ask you which was the biggest savior during during this pandemic uh, what would it have been just that one rahul uh one savior would be so uh, so we uh, we started with the whatsapp ordering we could not scale it as much as you would have liked to but it did open a lot of possibilities yes we can reduce the reliance on the traditional salesman we can reduce the frequency of the visit uh, we can uh, we can reach out to it can be two way channel as well we can convey our schemes uh, we can offer incentive to the retailer on selling range on selling npd on every order which is more than x rupees the additional coupon to so introduce more than 10 type of coupon just to incentivize salesman to shift his behavior uh, from a traditional way to the whatsapp based ordering yeah again again it has not grown so much but uh, business is much more receptive the channel is much more receptive to retail self ordering solutions stay right i would say uh, our d2c business it enables us to do uh, npd new product launches uh, um, in a controlled environment and it helps us to see you know what works what doesn't work so i think that is a great platform i think for me also it's been the d2c website i mean i mean when when everything else was down i think that was the only one channel where you would be able to get momentum which was going i think i think that was definitely the biggest savior at least for us during this entire episode uh, amazing uh, one one uh, last question or one 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 question that we have for a few more minutes but but if there was that one advice which you would have to give any of the founders which is there right now on that one one particular thing which which they should actually know or that they should learn to integrate into the business with any of the covid experience what would that be uh short and brief is totally fine uh chrimoy we start with you i think anything which helps us grow our top line so anything which has you, it could be in the analytics space where you analyze data and you know help, or it could be in the um application space but anything which helps us grow our top line uh, you know makes a difference is it rahul uh, i think if my advice would be that anything which can modernize the interface of trade that traditional store and many of them don't realize that they are under stress yeah means because of uh, they have increased cost manpower cost gst service expectation and average kirana shop gets 200 to 300 sales man every week yeah so how can we modernize this entire interface of trade uh, we have heard of geo we have yes 711 setting up operations very soon yeah how can we help them by efficiencies and help them arrest this erosion and the profitability through through tech led solutions i think i think for me uh, it uh, the only one one ex one advice i would give a lot of founders over here is how do you think customer and i think i think how do you how do you reach to a customer as fast as you can how do you understand a customer a lot better how do you get customer feedback a lot better 
and and how do you solve customers problems and as soon as you start thinking how do you solve any customers problems i think i think everything everything eventually starts uh, falling in place and and even during the pandemic i think there's been a lot of things which have actually changed and um, what was the situation before pandemic and uh, what it is right now has changed significantly so i think uh, to be on top of it or be on the edge of the game i think it's very very important for everyone to listen directly to a customer and i'm sure that every one of us has a channel which is open to and listening to customers so so any founder i think that's uh, every business will eventually come down to that and i think that's the most biggest learning experience out of this well i think uh, we are pretty much having 2 minutes i think that's good enough to leave uh, i mean uh, uh, thank you so much everyone i think it's been a, it's been a very insightful session uh shivam would you like to take it over so uh, karan uh, thank you so much uh, uh, to karan shimoy and uh, and uh, rahul to you know share their insights and i think uh, one take away from these success stories was uh, the role of technology and uh, next up uh, you know the panel discussion that we have is about how technologies are reshaping the retail industry uh, 